Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Nerd Caliber. This is Manny, and I'm here with Dr. Pat Freckenmiller. And today we're going to talk about Nova's uh, uh, on PBS, Alaskan Dinosaurs. Uh, what a great topic. I, I saw this, I heard about this, and I, I really wanted to talk to someone in the team. And I think that's such a fascinating topic because I, I don't usually associate Alaska with, with dinosaurs, and I think most people don't. Um, do, do you find that to be the case as well? Yeah, you know, it wasn't really until very recently, relatively speaking, last uh, 10, 15 years that, that dinosaurs have really been recognized as, uh, well, that Alaska has been recognized as a great place for finding dinosaurs. Um, it's pretty amazing thinking that not only are they in Alaska, uh, but 70 million years ago that Alaska was even farther north than it is today. So these were truly polar dinosaurs. These were the northernmost dinosaurs in the world. Hmm. So you were a part of this team that went to uh, study about the the journeys and and finding the fossils of these dinosaurs. When when you were when you joined this team, what mysteries were you hoping to solve? Like what 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 drew you to this project? Yeah. So the big questions we really had were uh, first and foremost, I'll say that kind of where Alaskan dinosaur paleontology is, is kind of where dinosaur paleontology in say the lower 48 or Western Canada was a hundred years ago. So we're at a very, very early stage in our understanding of what, who was up here. And so the first big question was what species of dinosaurs actually existed up in these polar latitudes around 70 million years ago and understanding those, you know, the, the structure of that ancient ecosystem uh, so that was one of the first big questions. We also wanted to then know if, um, are these dinosaurs unique to Alaska? Or are they the same species found at lower latitudes? And so these, we did, have uh, been doing detailed comparisons with Alaskan dinosaurs in places like Alberta and Montana, which have fantastic dinosaur collections. And then another big question was, um, were, they, were they actually overwintering here in the Arctic uh, or was, uh, was your average dinosaur saying, let's get the heck out of here. This is a horrible place to spend the winter and undertaking some long distance migrations to escape harsh winter conditions. And then finally, if they were overwintering, how did they do that? Uh, how does an animal survive four months of winter darkness? And how does a, uh, an animal also, uh, oh, sorry, just like, yeah. how does a, di a dinosaur survive four months of winter darkness? and uh, what would it eat during the winter months? So we had a lot of questions that we were actually interested in uh, investigating. Well, one of the fascinating things about this, this episode, this documentary, was that uh, it was the, the exploration aspect of it, where the team gets together and they uh, uh, formulate the things that they need for the journey. And now, I'm from the city. I grew up in the city. So anything hiking related to me looks too dangerous. Um, was that was that a factor you considered like, or I'm going to be a part of this and there's, there's a, a danger factor involved in this? There's a, our work is inherently dangerous for a number of different reasons. And it, it makes the work, maybe it sounds adventurous, but we do take safety first and foremost as our biggest priority. And the various things that we cope with are first and foremost, getting to the site involves almost, almost always involves two things, an aircraft of some sort, usually a helicopter or a single engine aircraft. And, and also then once we get there, we use the rivers as our highways. And so we have to, we use boats with um, small outboard motors. And so working near the water, working with small aircraft, inherently dangerous right there. Once you get to the site, of course, there are wildlife risks, um, primarily bears. Our, air, our study areas in, include places that have anything from black bears, brown bears, and even polar bears. And so we need to take precautions accordingly for those things. Uh, we, uh, we deal with harsh weather that's very easy to get very cold and hypothermic. Our, our winter dig this winter was literally at times in conditions of minus 50 Fahrenheit without a wind chill. And so uh, being adequately prepared for the weather is, you know, it's very important that we're not um, uh, dying of exposure out there. So, so yes, there's a lot of risk. And then one of the biggest risks as well is sometimes working around rocky outcrops, these cliffs tend to just want to kind of collapse on your head. Uh, they're held together mostly by permafrost. The permafrost is melting 
And so it's a very dangerous uh, area to be working in if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we take a lot of precautions to avoid that. So the purpose of this, um, this documentary, what are you hoping that anyone watching this will learn uh, from from seeing this episode, what 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 myths are you hoping to uh, debunk? Yeah, I, I think one of the big ones is that first of all, Alaska is a very great place to find dinosaurs. Uh, so that right there is really a great message. Like, yes, there are dinosaurs in Alaska, and yes, these dinosaurs were living in some of the most extreme environments that we know of that existed on the Earth at that time, at least in terms of cold and dark. These dinosaurs were existing sort of at the limits, the extremes of what dinosaurs were probably capable of living in. So that, that's a really great realization right there. Given those considerations, um, another take home message is that they weren't just living here, they were thriving here. They were doing uh, an amazingly great job of, of, they figured out in a variety of different ways, we're still trying to figure out how to survive here year round. They were, they were re reproducing in the Arctic. They were, they were uh, nesting here, having their babies, and um, they were overwintering. Uh, how they did that is, is also um, a great mystery we're still working on. And so I think the best thing about science to often share with people in the, in the science that we do is we've made some steps towards understanding something, but there's so much more to be understood yet about what these animals were doing um, throughout the year and how they managed to endure these kind of conditions. For anyone that, for me personally, when I watch this, uh, I want to learn more about it. Um, where can, what would you suggest uh, people read or, or watch uh, if they want to learn more about Alaskan dinosaurs? You know, right now, the understanding, understanding uh, um, Alaskan dinosaurs, we, there's, there's not um, a lot written yet. I mean, as I mentioned, a lot of the work that's being done here is in its early stages. So we tend to report our results in scientific journals and things of this sort, which are fairly, um, uh, you know, fairly, a little more technical and dry than perhaps the, the average person likes. Uh, but I would say that, um, you know, videos like this, this NOVA documentary provide a pretty good overview of an understanding of the types of the dinosaurs that were here, some of the things they might have been doing and not doing while living in the Arctic around 70 million years ago. Um, and um, we hope to be sharing more and more of these stories in a variety of different ways too, through museum exhibits and um, uh, in any other kind of documentaries that, that, that might come out of our research. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so this will be on uh, January 19th, I believe premieres. Um, and then, of course, check your local listings uh, to see what time uh, on PBS this will appear. Uh, any last words, anything you want to share before we wrap up? Well, I just want to say that, you know, the, the, the work we do up there is really, it's a, it's a product of a big team of people um, that, uh, you know, this, this work in particular is led by myself and by my colleague, Greg Erickson at Florida State University. Uh, but we have many collaborators from, from across the country and the world that we work with. Uh, we work on more than just the dinosaurs. We work on all aspects of the flora and fauna. And so we have uh, collaborators who provide their expertise in all these different groups. And so it's, it's nice not only to just be telling a science story, but to be sharing that science and working in collaboration with all these, uh, all these great people. So my, my thanks to all of them and all their efforts and all the field crews um, that make make these efforts possible. It's it's a it's a huge team effort. Excellent. Well, uh, our viewers, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for taking the time to share with us again. January nineteenth, Alaskan dinosaurs. I'll put the links in the description below so that you want to find it on, on their website or find more information about it on the website. You can do so, and um, be safe out there. Take care, okay. everyone. <laughs> thank you. Take care.